and okay i'm good okay uh, the label element as we saw in the previous article the label element is the formal way to define label for an html form widget this is the most important element if you want to build accessible form when implemented properly screen readers will screen readers will speak a form elements label along with any related instruction take this example which we saw in the previous article okay with the label associated correctly with the input via the for and id attributes respect the label for attribute references the id attribute of the corresponding widget a screen reader will read out something like name edit text if the label isn't set up correctly a screen reader will only read out something like edit text blank which isn't very helpful at all note that a widget can be nested inside its label element like so so label for name name input type text name username and label okay even in such cases however it is considered best practice to set the for attribute because some assistive technologies do not understand implicit relationships between labels and widget labels are clickable too another advantage of properly set up labels is that you can click the labels to activate the corresponding widget in all browsers this is useful for example like this Uh, this is just the radio button or hit the label okay no yeah multiple labels strictly speaking you can put multiple labels on a single widget but this is not a good idea as some assistive technologies can have trouble handling them in the case of multiple labels you should nest a widget and its labels inside a single label element let's consider this example okay the paragraph at the top defines the rule for required elements it must be at the beginning to make sure that assistive technology such as screen readers will display it will display or vocalize it to the user before they find the required that they and that way they will know what the asterisk means a screen reader will speak the star as star or required depending on the screen reader setting in any case what will be spoken is made clear in the first paragraph in the first example the label is not read out at all with the input you just get edit text blank plus the actual labels are read out separately the multiple label elements confuse the screen reader in the second example things are a bit clearer the label the label read out along with the input is name star name edit text and the labels are still read out separately things are still a bit confusing but it's a bit better this time because the input has a label associated with it the third example is best the actual label is read out all together and the label read out with the input is name star edit text you might get slightly different results depending on your screen reader this was tested in voice over yeah now you can find this example on okay 
common HTML structures used with beyond the structures specific to HTML forms. It is good to remember that forms are just HTML. This means that you can use all the power of HTML to structure an HTML form. As you can see in the example, it's common practice to wrap a label and its widget with a div element. The elements are also commonly used as HTML lists. The latter is most common for structuring multiple checkboxes or radio. In addition to the field set element, it's also common practice to use HTML titles, example H and sectioning, example section to structure a complex form. Above all, it is up to you to find a style that you find comfortable to code and which also results in accessible, usable form. This has each separate section of functionality contained in section elements and a field set to contain the radio buttons. Okay. Active learning, building a form structure. Uh, am I going too fast, guys? No, you're all right. Okay. Active learning, building a form structure. Let's put these ideas into practice and build a slightly more involved form structure, a payment form. This form will contain a number of widget type that you may not yet understand. Don't worry about it for now. You'll find out how they work in the next article. For now, read the descriptions carefully as you follow the below instructions and start to form an appreciation of which wrapper elements we are using to structure the form and work. To start with, make a local copy of a blank template file. Okay. CSS and as CSS for okay. CSS also. <clears throat> Okay, uh, should I continue? Yeah, sure. Okay. First of all, uh, the access to the HTML by adding the flowing link lying inside the HTML head. Next, start your form off by adding the outer form element. Okay. okay. Inside the form tag, start by adding a heading and paragraph to inform users how required fields are marked. H1, required, okay. Okay, so next we'll add a larger section of code into the form below our previous entry. Here you'll see that we are wrapping the contact information fields inside a distinct section 
Moreover, we have a set of two radio buttons, each of which we are putting inside its own list element. Last, we have two standard text inputs and the associated labels, label elements, each, cons each contained inside a P element, plus a password input for entering a password. And this code to your form now. Okay. We're gonna write this out manually just for so I can uh, okay. like, go through uh, it all. Okay. Okay. Next, we'll have so another section of code below a previous here. You'll see that we are wrapping the content information fields inside a distinct section element. Last, we'll have two standard text inputs and their associated labels. Hello. Yep. Uh, someone joined in, in the call. Oh, someone Thanks. joined the call? Uh, I, yeah. Oh, my guys. Oh, hey. Hello. Hello. Hi. Sorry. Uh, we're just doing the HTML forms right now. HTML form. Yeah. But where is that? So we have UL. Uh, by the way, did you guys uh, do the email HTML homework? Thing. Sorry? Which, which the, email? Email, HTML, email, uh, email, HTML, what is it? He, uh, Jonathan put it in the homework uh, section. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I did. Are you, you, you finished it? Um, well, I did three of them. Okay. Uh, what? Uh, where? Where did you? What resources did you refer? Yeah, hold on. I did uh, smooth scrolling, HTML patterns, and CSS and box set. Okay.
Okay, so this form doesn't have a button. Oh, there's a separate section for that. What are the field set attributes used for again? Do you guys remember? Um, what? Field set. Um, it's to make it up to group the widgets together. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's like a, a div element just for widgets, I guess. I don't know. Um, You guys already went through the free code camp, right? We went through the basic HTML and CSS, but then we continued with the MDN stuff. P label for number span. Oh, I know. Oh. Mm.
Did you guys record your meetings from before so I could go back on? Yep, they're all recorded. Uh, I just haven't uploaded them to YouTube yet. Okay. I'll post them tonight. Okay. <laughs> so now we'll turn to the second section of our form. Uh, payment information here, three distinct widgets along with their labels. Second for selecting credit card type. Second is an input. And the last one is type dates. They're really throwing a lot at you right off the bat. Yep. There's a lot for forms. I really wish we could see what the form results were after pressing the button, pay one button. Mm -hmm.
That was a lot. Yeah. Hmm. I'll be right back. You guys go on with that. It's good. Mine is, uh, you know, for the date, mine isn't showing up inside the box. Uh, your date isn't showing up. It's showing up. Oh, never mind. Okay, it is now. It wasn't supported by uh, Internet Explorer. Okay. All right. So... Should we move on? What? Should we move on? Yeah, let's go. Okay. So summary. Give me. Yep. Yeah. You will now. You now. Okay, you read. You will now have all the knowledge you'll need to properly structure your HTML forms. Uh, the next article will dig into implementing all the different types of form widgets you'll want to use to collect form collect information on your user.